Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right in corner, we got Aegis starting as the pink Zerg. Bottom right in corner, we got Crocon starting as the black Zerg. This is BSL Season 17 Hasu League, round of 32, Group G, uh, losers match. So it's the best of three. Aegis up a game currently. Overlord making its way top left. This Overlord for Crocon making its way to the north should give. Oops, do not end the game. Gives him a solid advantage. This is going to be on retro. So another four player map. We'll see if Aegis goes for the in-base hatchery once again. But I really liked his play previously, in particular hiding those Zerglings. Krokon putting up a pretty solid defense, but still just ending up losing too many drones. And I think that critical decision to build another wave of Zerglings rather than Mutalisks, really solid. Aegis able to sweep through as a result. And actually noticing the APM difference as well. Aegis... A low APM Zerg player. As is the tradition with American Zergs. So Aegis joining the... The company of LZ Gamer. Who people, you know... Well named. Because he, he oftentimes would stay sub-120 APM as well. Spawning pool. And he really liked playing for the EAPM. And not really worrying about... Massive amount of APM otherwise. To which people mocked him quite a bit, but he had a lot of success. Spawning pool dropped over pool, same on the opposite end. No quick gas as of yet from Aegis. We'll see if we'll see gas the opposite side. I think Crocon doing a little bit of better job with patch selection and maybe doing some mineral boosting. So ending up a little bit ahead in resources overall. And it looks like we're going to see pool into expansion from Aegis rather than gas. To start, there's so many variations in ZVZ. That's the other interesting thing I think about ZVZ, is there's so many small things you can do. This is true of Brood War at large, but there's so many very small things you can do in ZVZ, like build an extractor slightly later, things like that. Go just two drones, one drone on, other things like that, that radically change the matchup. Ages down a drone right the second because of that hatchery. The Overlord, in fact, did spot... So it looks like Krokong going to grab an expansion himself. With that earlier gas, he is going to end up... So he's going to end up down Larva in the mid-game, but he's going to end up up gas in the mid-game. And oftentimes it is that gas advantage, which results in a victory overall. On top of that, he's going to be able to see exactly how many Zerglings are making his way, are making their way his direction. Four Zerglings to engage. I don't know if he saw all of these, though. Six... Zergling's opposite end. Is he getting the extra pair? He is getting the extra pair in between. Overlord sidling it way that direction. Aegis is going to be able to, the very least, Zergling's trying to blockade, is going to be able to spot that hatchery. And is Aegis going to continually engage? It looks like not, nor has he invested in speed. So Lair is behind, but not incredibly behind. But critically, we are going to see a little bit... So an earlier... Slightly earlier expansion here from Aegis is going to capitalize and go for that second gas. Krokon, in the meantime, playing defensively. He's got a drone waiting. I think that might have been... Yeah, he's dropping a defensive creep colony. And this is maybe a result of what happened. This actually surprises me. So that's not a result of game one. This is him wanting to be the aggressor. Not going for Zergling speed alongside it, though. So moving a lot of the Zerglings forward. We have the... I'm stealing this from YouTube land, by the way. The Great Wall of Chitin. Out here for Aegis. See if he can defend. But basically what the Sunken Colony is going to provide is, yes, Krokron sacrifices a drone to do so, but that also allows him to be more aggressive on the ground and not have to worry about defense as much. Spire is being plopped down at nearly the same moment. And things equalizing a bit. Aegis still down a drone overall. I'm not sure in what location or what capacity. See if he's able to sneak something additional. Krokon actually able to sneak an additional drone overall. Maybe feeling a little bit more comfortable with that Sutton Colony out in the front. So Aegis up a sliver of supply. Gas critically being grabbed from Krokon at this stage. So a little bit earlier. Aegis going to be grabbing it. Ah, like, uh, and that, this could be the difference. That might be Mutalisks, if you think about it visually, a Mutalisk right here and fighting towards the natural expansion rather than an, rather than fighting this direction for Aegis. 
and position of the Mutalist fights is critical. Spire is going to finish on both ends at nearly the identical moments. It looks like Zergling's moving out for Krokon to put pressure on Aegis. He's up two drones. Suddenly, Zergling Flood trying to time it as the Spire finishes. Spire is now complete. Are we going to see initial... And the Zergling's actually pulling back. And we do see initial three mutals being constructed ahead of Krokon. Krokon delaying a little bit. Getting his initial mutalists out in the air. So Aegis is going to end up with a slight time advantage. Now he's got that two drone lead. And an overlord's been spotted. This also could be... So this is going to be challenge for Aegis. So maybe if he dedicates one mutalist to the north... He can try to pick off that overlord and maybe try to rescue this one to the south. Or he can just try to dive. Tor this is troublesome, though. I don't know if he's going to try to defend it or not. This overlord backing off in the darkness currently. So both players playing a little bit in the veil of ignorance, I like to say. Throwing out a philosophy reference. Right now, though, Aegis two drones up, even on supply otherwise, which I believe means he's either down Mutalisks or down Zerglings, one of the two, and I think he might be down Mutalisks right this second somehow. Six, and then two in stock. Yeah, checking the corner to make sure Mutalisks are not pursuing. A Zergling making its way across isn't able to spot the Mutalisks right there, although the Zergling spotting the Mutalisks... Ooh. And ooh... That is enormous. Now Krokon, if he just... Well, he's backing up. I'm not sure why he's backing up. Some drones picked off. Age is still engaging in this fight, despite being down Mutalists overall. So one drone lost. Aegis is going to end up losing this fight overall. Is dedicating himself. It looks like he's not going to micro against the Scourge. His armies... That could... That, I think that might just be it. I'm a little bit shocked that Aegis decided to engage that. So first of all, he took two gigantic Scourge hits. Which you would think would lead him to either engage with Zerglings to try to buy himself some time or back off otherwise. Instead, diving in, he got a drone kill, but then continued to engage. An additional... Mutal is taking hit. That's a yet another Muta down. Now Krokon with a massive lead, and I do not believe that Aegis is going to be able to recover it from this stage. I think that's the other issue in Zerg versus Zerg versus any of the other matchups is Brood War is punishing as it is, but a single mistake in ZVZ will cost you the match at all levels. And there's also, I think, fewer catch-up mechanics that you can work with is the other aspect of it. Is, is it's, There just isn't a lot... There isn't as many uh, things that you need to micromanage where it's like, okay, you're going to tax APM and therefore push someone back out. It's a lot, difficult to, a lot more difficult to come back from behind. Armor upgrade out there from Aegis. Another Scourge landing. Yet again, Aegis has just been eating these Scourge wholesale. Scourge going to now box the mutalisks out rest of the engagement pushing up this is a closer reinforcement point for ages but it shouldn't make that much of a difference because this is just a massive army for Krokon now micring against what remains and that should be GG we're going to move to a final match still no GG from Aegis overall I guess he has some drones to bleed but now he's going to be shut down on a gas there is no catch up at this stage this is just too many Mutalists. Even if he managed to get a full wave spawned, that'll be it. I guess he's going to expend the Zerglings. The Zerglings now. See, this is what should have I was expecting earlier. Aegis now dedicating the Zerglings forward. Something Colony waiting for him as well as a wall of Zerglings opposite side. Presumably, as soon as this army is taken care of, that should be GG for Aegis. Because Krokon can just make his way right back out. Still going to try to fight it to the end here, though. Force... Yeah, the four... Scourge are not going to be sufficient. Krokon might have... Yeah, and able to pick off two of them right there. And moving in with his own Zergling Force now that that's been... Yeah, there's GG. So we'll move on to game three, which will be to the cider to see who advances. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.